Hey everyone, Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and it's time for part five in our series of how to build a mining rig, with this one gonna be focusing on powering your mining rig, right? Because already by now in this series, you should have already identified the foundation, case, mining rig, frame, whatever you got, shelf, motherboard, CPU, and the number of GPUs that you're going to build in this rig. Now it's a matter of identifying what you're gonna need to power it safely. Because I myself experienced some issues. <laughs> There it is. And there wasn't a peace of mind in me when I was pushing 1100 watts through a 110 volt outlet. So eventually I did upgrade and give it its own 10, uh, 240 volt, excuse me, its own dedicated 240 line and 30 amp breaker, which gave me that peace of mind. And I actually done a video basics on how to power your mining rig, if you wanna check that out in the description. And I shared my experience with some of the power issues that I had, but I would say check out Parallel Miner. They are in the description, and if you click the link, I do get a kickback. Uh, but they offer power supply kits for cheaper than what you could get with a traditional ATX power supply. So I would challenge you to compare and contrast, uh, but the power supply kits on these are really good. And, and you gotta be uh, mindful of the fact that on these power supplies, they say they're rated for 1200 watts. However, if you're on a 110 volt or 120 volt system, you're only gonna be pulling around 750 rather than the full 1200. You gotta be on a 220 volt or 240 volt, so please bear that in mind. Another shout out for my buddy ZN2 Plus. Uh, this article on Reddit has helped out many of noobs. It just has all the links, stuff like that, because the same question gets asked over and over again, how to safely power your mining rig. I personally try to steer away from using these SATA to six pin splitters. It's a big debate amongst the mining community. I just like to avoid it at all costs. Uh, because I want that peace of mind and I power everything with six pins or eight pins or whatever I got uh, But you can see here. This is a riser Some of these risers I would not pair with some of the higher TDP or higher power draw uh, GPUs 3090 Radeon 7 3080 so on and so forth uh, But there's plenty of good information out there and there's resources that actually give you the power draw of each GPU Not not this one. This one's not updated right? it doesn't have the 3000 series doesn't have a 6000 series, but there's, there's links out there, there's information out there in which you can do it. Otherwise, I have a link back to the sheet that I mentioned in my last video where you can see not only the cost for all of the components, it may not be 100% accurate, I, I have to update it, and, but you're always welcome to make your own copy. But you can see the price of all of our GPUs and components. We can see the power draw of all of it and the hash efficiency. Uh, you can see here that pretty much everything from the 3080 non-LHR up is gonna be about 250 watts plus. So we just gotta bear that in mind. And the reason that number is important, excuse me, it's 320, I was looking at the wrong area. Three, I thought that was wrong, 320 plus. And the reason these numbers are important is because that's the stock TDP or stock power draw of these cards, not the mining power draw. Because yes, you can go to whattomine.com and be like, oh, this 3070 only draws 130, 120 watts. But the stock TDP is different and the reason a stock TDP is important is because, for example, if the card stock TDP is 220 and your system reboots, Windows updates, something happens, the driver crashes, and you're starting to pull the stock power through your splitter or cables and your cables can't handle it, that could be a problem. This could be a potential fire hazard. You could catch something on fire or potentially, at worst case, burn your house down. So just to go over this real quick, these are ATX... Uh, power supply measures, but they're pretty much the same thing. Just six pin PCIe, eight pin, and then Molex and SATA. So let's go over it. So when I say strand, if you're looking right here in front of you right now, you can see that this section of the, the strand connects to the power supply. And then over here, we got an eight pin splitter. And this one strand is rated at 288. The next one down, same thing. This one strand, even though it has two eight pin splitters, is rated for a total of 288 or less on the six pin. Even if you have three, four, five, six pin to eight pin splitters at the end, because it's on one strand, it can only handle so much, right? So if you're, if you're going from the power supply and it's three six pins, this entire six pin connection should only be 216 or less. If your GPU stock TDP is higher than that, 
you probably don't want to do it now you could get away with it and be fine and you could power your system for a very long time just know that if you're using six pin splitters to dual eight pin that the the main the main power is 216 if you're using eight pin to dual eight pin the whole thing is for 288 that's why i like to connect everything my risers my gpus and everything to a six pin or eight pin depending on what i need the molex connections you can see that the strand is 156 or less um, and even though it may have a whole number of connections right so max of two connections that's 156 divided by two and that's the total amount of power per gpu or per whatever device you're powering on the sata side of things 54 is it even if you have four sata connections on there 54 watts is it which is why i, I don't bother with it um i've seen people break or hurt their radeon sevens or have gpus get hurt or something happen because they were using a sata to six pin splitter or they were even powering because some risers even come where you could just plug the sata connection right into it um i've seen issues with that right 54 watts is not what the the pcie compliance cost well pcie compliance pcie power draw is so when you're when your gpu is plugged in to the actual slot on the motherboard it can pull 75 watts from the motherboard but when we're connected through risers what we're telling the the system to do is to provide all the power the gpu needs through the the six pin or eight pin or whatever we got it shouldn't be drawing power through the risers unless you're using the molex power on your boards if you look at your mining motherboard and you see those molex slots or those molex uh, ports if you power those then that's that's telling the system to provide supplemental power through the riser i don't like to use them i traditionally don't use them but you just want to be mindful of that each system is different each gpu is different just be mindful of it check out this um sheet that i have again based on savage mind huge shout out to him uh much love for our, our brother and you can use it to kind of see all the power draw numbers for your your gpu at stock tdp and then mining power i hope it helps you out but that's pretty much going to do it for me today uh, please check out the video basics on how to power your mining rig make sure you link or share any insight you might have in the, for the community down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts as well but uh do me a favor on the way out hit the like button don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell to stay up to date with what's going on check out some of the links in the description that do help out the channel like the parallel miner or dogelord.com where you get some sweet uh, serpent x merch and much more and i'll catch you guys in the next one take care